So anyway, folks, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into Radio Graffiti! <laughs> it's right. What's up, guys? So Wonder Woman 1984 has finally arrived. This movie's been trying to come out since, like, November of 2019. Well, we finally got it now. It's a Christmas miracle. The movie's finally escaped this curse, and it's now on HBO and whatever movie theaters are still alive at the time. Now, is the movie any good? Because there's been a lot of reviews saying this is awesome, it's cool, it's, like, amazing. But is it, though? You guys know I'm be real with you, so let's go and get into this shit. So I just seen Wonder Woman 1984, and um, I gotta keep it real with you guys. Uh, I don't see how this movie has such a high score on Rotten Tomatoes. I thought this movie was fucking. I don't know if I want to say it was trash. I'm gonna have to rewatch this movie a couple times before I can really get a final verdict on it. It's gonna take some time to soak in. I thought that's how all movies are. You watch them the first time, and this is gonna be more like a first impression more than like a real review because I feel like to get a good firm opinion on a movie you gotta let it soak a little bit you gotta give it some time and right now i'm not gonna lie to you this movie's kind of trash to be honest with you i was not looking forward to watching this movie which is a huge problem considering no comic book movies that come out this entire year besides birds of prey and new mutants i guess but who gives a fuck about that but you know we haven't had a good big blockbuster movie all year and now we got wonder woman and i really didn't want to watch it the trailers look pretty bad, the CGI didn't look so good, I just thought it was going to be a corny, cheesy movie, and sure enough, that's what it was. I got a lot of negatives, unfortunately, for you guys, so let's go ahead and get into that now. Now, first off, let me see, I thought the first Swarm Woman movie was just okay. You know, it wasn't anything special. I did a review on it, but my main problem with the movie was the villains. I thought there was too many of them, and they were all just cartoonish characters. You know, I just didn't... I did not like that shit at all, what they were doing with that, but it's, it's an average okay movie, nothing special, nothing, not the worst movie ever made or anything like that, so, it's just, ugh, whatever, I don't, there's other better comedy movies to watch. And Wonder Woman 1984, this movie I had to pause it a couple of times because of how cringy it was sometimes, just some of the scenes are just so cheesy, this movie's very cheesy, it's like a mix of, it's like if you put Justice League, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and... Christopher Reeves, Superman movies, all in a blender, and you just mix them up. That's basically Wonder Woman 1984 for you. I mean, it's just some of the characters in here, too, they feel like something out of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. They're just, like, a joke. Like, just fucking stupid. I do not, not really fuck with this movie, to be real with you. And I've been looking forward to this movie for, like, years. Just like everybody else has, ever since the first Wonder Woman came out. And I, my, going into this movie, I was like, how can it be any worse than the first movie? The, the villains were so fucking terrible in that movie. And I gotta give credit where credit's due. Pedro Pascal, he does an amazing job in this movie as Maxwell Lord. I actually thought he was the best part of the movie. My only problem, though, is that, like, at the end of the movie, he started getting a little cartoonish. But besides that, I thought he was pretty good in the movie. Like, all the emotional moments he has with his son, I thought that worked really good and really made me feel something. So, uh, that was one of the best parts of the entire movie was actually his scenes with his son. And it's actually refreshing to see a superhero movie where the superhero actually wants to save people actually cares about people, you know, they feel like an actual nice, good person that you want to hang out with. I think Gal Gadot does a better job in this movie than she did in the last movie. She feels more, like, experienced, I guess. That's probably because she's been in the role for so many years now, so she's starting to get that real hang of being yeah, Wonder Woman, you can really tell this. I think she did a better job in this movie, but unfortunately we still got some pretty cheesy acting. It's mostly, like, in the beginning, like, with that little girl they keep shoving in these fucking movies, I don't know why. The acting's pretty bad, which, I mean, it's a little girl, so I won't shit on her too much, but this overall, the acting's kind of bad. Whoever that is that plays Sheeta, I was not a big fan of her. She's one of the characters that feel like a character out of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, where they're just like, <laughs> like, as soon as they showed her, I was starting to laugh. It's like, you can't be serious with this. This is just a joke, right? I can't believe this is how they're introducing this character. She's just, it's basically to where you can read the character just by how they dress and walk and talk. Her first scene, she's wearing a bunch of stupid-ass looking clothes that are, like, way too big for her. And as soon as she gets into work, she, like, drops all of her papers out of her suitcase. And I was like, oh my god. Is this movie fucking serious? This writing is like something from fucking the 80s. But yeah, the movie will randomly have scenes with Barbara where she's just running around. And then they'll start having men just start hitting on her for whatever reason. And it's just like... Why does this movie keep treating all the male characters like fucking pigs? Like a bunch of fucking horn dogs that could give you a dick in their pants. 
Barbara will literally just go get some ice cream, and then there'll be a bunch of dudes on the street, and they're just like, hey, sexy, you want to ride my cock? Or, you know, just some weird shit like that, and it's like, hey, beautiful, what you doing tonight? <laughs> it's like something out of Captain Marvel. It's just fucking stupid. It's like, what the fuck? This is just cringy. I feel like it's just Patty Jenkins trying to say, oh, look, look how men subject a woman to their knees. And then, of course, Cheetah beats them up, or Wonder Woman beats them up, whenever they start acting all perverted. And it's just like, come on now, bro. I thought we were better than this. We don't have to shove this kind of propaganda bullshit in here. Come on now, let's not do this. Just making male characters look fucking stupid. And imagine how the effects look pretty bad. Man, there's a scene where a woman is in a wedding dress, and she gets saved by a Diana. It looks fucking stupid, dude. Like, the green screen in here is also really bad, but these effects look pretty shit. Like, every time, I'm glad there wasn't that much action in this movie, actually. Because every time I get to an action scene, it looks laughably bad. I, literally every action scene, I don't even have to start listening them. Just every action scene in the movie is like this. For example, Wonder Woman and uh, Steve are going out to Pedro Pascal and they're on the little trucks or whatever. So much of that looks stupid. Most of the bad stuff, though, is like in the mall scene. All of that was just a complete cringe fest. That whole scene felt like something out of Justice League. Uh, the, just, like she moves, she moves a little girl out of the way, and she slides, and it looks so fucking fake. It's hard to not laugh when you see that. It really takes me out of the movie. Some of the terrible looking effects. It feels like Shazam. And what's weird about that is that this movie has had over a year now to perfect their CGI and effects. You try to polish it up a little bit. It's been just sitting here for a year. Because, you know, because of COVID and everything, they keep having to delay the movie. So, they could have took all that time to kind of polish up on that kind of stuff. And they didn't, apparently, because it looks fucking terrible. And, yeah, the villains are kind of shit in this movie, too. Cheetah's in this movie. And I really don't know why. Her and uh, Diana are best friends or whatever. And then after meeting Diana for one scene, she suddenly is like, I wish I could be Diana. Even though she only knows her from going to dinner with her once. Which makes no fucking sense at all. And then somehow she turns into... She basically wishes she had superpowers. And then at the end of the movie, she's like, Never mind, I want to be a cheetah, apparently. And it's like, who the fuck would want to wish to be a cheetah? This is so retarded. And cringy. Like, Welcome what the, to the fuck? Future. And then Pedro Pascal, while well, he does do a good job, his character is basically just a genie. He's walking up to people the entire movie. And he's like... And he's like, If you could have one thing to wish for, who would you wish? And they tell their wish and they come true or whatever. But then by the end of the movie, it all just gets undone Think apparently. So basically the whole movie was pointless because nothing wanted. actually happens. Because all the wishes people grant get undone by the end of the movie. And then you Barbara kind of gets electrocuted and yet she somehow still survives. So and I think by the end of the movie she was like normal looking. So is Cheetah already done or what? Was that, was that no. it for Cheetah? This franchise? Because so that's a huge waste of Cheetah. Cheetah is like. Wonder Woman's Everyone most see. iconic villain ever. Cheetah is to Wonder Woman, but Joker is to Batman. So if that's all they're gonna do with the character, that's really stupid. I'm sorry, but why the fuck would you do that? Hopefully she has something else planned for the future, because that was it, that was the complete waste for a character. Yeah, I really just know the villain is really great. Right. needs you. A lot of sun for great things. The guy was just terrible. You know what you need to do. Green screen is bad. Basically, like, it really doesn't look on to me a lot of the green screen CGI. Which shows we got an excuse because we got kind of taken home with the last minute of the job. But this movie has had like a whole year to change this year, so I don't know what, what their excuse is, but I don't know. One more my 1984 overall is just pretty good. Best parts about the movie are Page of Pascal. I also enjoyed Diana and Steve's scene in the movie, I thought that was pretty emotional as well. Yeah, besides that, I really, I really can't think of any reason for you to see this movie. It's, so it's just like, ugh. DC, when will you ever get your shit together? I'm running for you and you're letting me down. Please stop releasing shit like this. Please.